So you've got your survey questions, and these are pretty much, the, this forms the basis of your discovery survey. You've got your long form questions that you can ask, you've got your radio button, or any other type of demographic or uh, product demand or any other type of question you can ask during the survey, uh, just so that you can, again, better understand your audience and where they're coming from. There are four types of um, question options. There's the short text, which is like the one-liners, uh, perfect for you know things like other or name or things like that. You've got your long text, which are for the big open-ended questions. You've got the radio buttons, which the radio button means you can only choose one option. And then you've got your text boxes where you can actually uh, select as many uh, options as available. And these can be any kinds of questions. You got, again, bucket questions that will segment. Uh, you've got your product questions, grease the will questions, and again, anything that you can think of, this is where you will ask those in your survey. Here's a couple of examples, and you guys may uh, very well be familiar with these because we just asked them in a survey we put out before uh, registering for this exact call. So you've got your uh, long form text here. This is the big open-ended question. And then you've got your radio buttons over here where you can only select one of the options. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and jump into Brian's uh, survey here. And um, we'll just add the questions in. I've already got them built in. Uh, we went through and, and got all of this stuff done in advance. This is another good thing too. So you, you always want to have yourself prepared before you're, you know, you go into Bucket. Bucket is a tool, but if you can have as much done in advance before you get in there, it just makes this process so much easier. So we've got our first question, which in this case is the, um, the single most important question for those of you who are familiar with the ask method. We're gonna plug that in right there. And then we're gonna put a quick description in. Then, as you can see here, where it says choose text box height. So this is where we're gonna give as much space as possible. This is gonna give us the four rows. They can put in more than four rows, but this is how it looks in the beginning. So it, you, you wanna get, make it look like they can put as much information as possible. So I always like just maxing it out at the four rows, right? That way they know they can put in as much as they want. And then what you'll do here, is mark this as the single most important question of the discovery survey. And what that'll automatically do is make it a required uh, question as well. And then we will save this. And then we'll add another question. And so we have our next question here is, are you a man or a woman? Yeah, I'm gonna pull this down like this so I can just kind of tab in and out. And so what we'll do here is we'll grab this uh, we'll grab this radio button because it's going to be a yes or no question. Paste that in, and then you can again just in a, the question description, just give a reason why you're asking this question, and then we'll add in our options. We've got man. And then what you'll do here is hit save. And then we'll do the last question, which is how long until you retire? And on this one, you'll notice I'm adding a zap tag or a zappier tag. And I'm gonna walk you through zappier in a few minutes. But the reason we're taking this, adding it to this section, and we didn't on the others, is for their email marketing, they wanted to have, uh, Brian wanted to put the results from here into his email marketing system to use for later. This is information they didn't already have, so he's putting it in and collecting that as part of their, their marketing materials for later on. And so the way that, you'll, the way that we set that up 
is you create a Zapier tag so that uh, Zapier will know to send this off to his uh, email provider when someone fills out this survey. And then we'll add these options in. So we've got how long until you retire? Option number one, I'm already retired. We've got option two, less than five years. Option three, between five and 10 years. And option four, more than 10 years. Okay. So now we've got our third question filled in here. And I believe this is the last question. Yep. So now we have our question portion set up. So we've got, we skipped the, the welcome page. And so what happens if you skip the welcome page, it, as soon as someone clicks to go to your survey, they're instantly faced with your first question. So it just cuts out that one extra step if you don't need it and sends them straight to the questionnaire, okay? And then from there, we go and we set up the lead capture page. So once they've answered all your questions, you can get their email address, you can get their phone number, basically any contact information you want from them so that you can follow up with them at a later time. And the elements that you can use, it's also set up the way the welcome page was, uh, where you can go in and build it out. Um, you could do everything that you could do on the welcome page, uh, which is the headline, subhead, all of those things, so that you can create a, a strong, solid lead capture page. So we're going to go ahead and jump over into that page for Mr. Anderson. So all you do to set that up is you come over and grab the contact info box and drag it over to the contact info section, all right? And we already have this stuff loaded up. So the way that, that we set this up for Brian is we actually, we're not gonna be using like a big headliner on there. Um, okay, we're not even gonna use the subhead. We're gonna do, just have it go straight to the, body text and there's the main reason why it is literally oh and we also took off that the main reason why is it didn't really need a big headline here um, if you're doing like a multi-step and you want to say things like step one or step two you're totally fine doing that uh, and this one it was just kind of a real toned down approach uh, and so that's why we're you know we're kind of getting rid of the um, we're, we're disabling a lot of the elements just so it doesn't take up a lot of space and jump straight into uh, just basic information. Uh, one of the things that you can do on this page is uh, pull down the phone description and this will kind of give you a chance to uh, make, the, make the case for getting their phone number. So, once you're set up with the lead captures, as you guys can see, it's super simple, right? You just, you, you add the, the text onto the page. And then from there, we just need to create a thank you page. And this is the page that your uh, responders will see after they've completed the lead capture page, they are sent immediately over to the thank you page. And if it looks familiar, as far as the things you can do with it, that's because it's exactly what you do on all the other pages, the welcome page, the lead capture page. Thank you page is exactly the same. You just drag the thank you page over here and we've got our content pre-prepared, I believe. Yep. So we'll take that, fill in this headline. We'll throw in the sub headline here. And then again, just like everything else, you can slap a video or uh, an image up on this page. And so, so if, you, if you have like a great thank you video set up to walk them through whatever next steps, you absolutely can do that here as well. Uh, we're just gonna throw some body text on there. And 
we are good to go. Now you can also leave this button. Like if you wanted to send somebody off to maybe a Facebook group or back to your homepage or a blog post, something relevant to your, your survey, you have, this is a great opportunity to do that. You can have a button on this page that lets you do that. If you don't, if this is the last stop for them, you can just disable the button, disable the sub body text and boom, you've got yourself a thank you page that thanks them for taking your survey. Save that bad boy down and now you've got yourself a fully built discovery survey, okay? And so from here, the next step is to just kind of tweak the looks of it a little bit. You can change the colors, change the backgrounds, add a logo and things like that. So we wanna go ahead and make it look good. Uh, you, there's again, just a few little things you can do on here. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through setting up for Brian's. Uh, we, we've got some images from them. We got their logo uh, and we got, um, I think that was it. I think we just have a good logo and a good background to make this thing look nice. So here is how you do that. Once you've set up all of your questions and your, your survey is ready to go, you come right up here and click design. And if you want to add a logo, just come over to header, hit upload, and boom, you can add your logo right in. And then the logo will also be there throughout the entire website as well, throughout the entire funnel. And each funnel is completely separate. So while you know we're doing this is the annuity straight talk funnel, another funnel I go start, if I put bucket logo in it, it's only going to be specific to that. Uh, survey in that funnel. Um, there's a couple other things you can do here is you can add an image or I change the background color uh, in the design screen. So we're going to actually, let's go ahead and do that right now. But we're going to add this kind of weak looking background there. Um, we don't have a welcome page, so we don't need one for that, but we do have a contact page uh, where we'll want to upload it there. And then the thank you page, we'll want to upload it there as well. And the reason why you have to do it in all these different places is some people want the flexibility of changing the background based on the page that you're on. Totally doable. In this case, we're just going to keep it standard throughout the entire uh, survey. All right? So then you save the changes. Click back, and that does it for this section. You know, we could change the font size. We're not going to on this one. It's it's set at the right. It, the The default format is medium, but you can make it huge. You can make it tiny. We're just going to leave it as it is, and then you can play with all the different uh, fonts there if you want to change that. Again, those are all uh, survey wide. So when you make a change here, it affects the entire survey along let's go ahead and get into our configuration because once you build out the survey and you slap the different colors on it it's time to to kind of tweak that back in uh, you can do all kinds of things here on this uh, on the general tab uh, as you can see you can you know, you've got your name if you need to change the name so like if you clone it it'll say copy of here's where you'll come to change the survey name to whatever you want it to be um, you can change the target number of uh, responses. So if you're doing like a, a classic uh, deep dive survey where you're looking for, you know, at least 250 responses, you can set that here. If you're running maybe a more uh, manual lean survey where you're entering the information yourself based on conversations or interviews, you would adjust that to, you know, slightly probably less than 250, unless you've got all the time in the world to, to conduct interviews. Uh, this meta information over here, this is, the, this is the stuff that's gonna appear in the browser and when you link it in things like Facebook or Twitter where the link automatically converts itself to uh, ex display what the page is about. So here we would do uh, AST survey demo just for now, but this would be something probably a lot more eye-catching and persuasive uh, if we were gonna stick this out in the wild. This is where you would make those changes. 
You can do some progress bar stuff. I don't really think you need to for a one or two question survey, but you certainly have the ability to. If you don't want your buttons or you don't want your radio options to be automatic or you want to give people the option to go back and forth, you can put a continue and a back button. And I know a lot of times, and, and now I, I remember someone said something about uh, Italian. So these buttons can be changed you know, and written obviously in your uh, native language. There is one button, the very beginning uh, welcome button that, or not the welcome button, but the very first uh, question button that can't be changed uh, to another language yet. We're still working on that. Right now it just says next in English. So that's the one, I guess, abnormality that's out there on the, uh, the landing pages for the, uh, or the question pages, I should say, for the survey. Um, so make sure that every time you make some changes before you go clicking off to other parts, you always want to click save so that all saves down. And this is also where we get into integration. This 